Good morning. Okay. My fascination and what I study is happiness, how it works, why it's so important to our lives, and my passion and what drives my work is creating a clear and precise language around happiness and sharing tactics and strategies for lasting happiness. Now, what started as a side interest for me has now become the heart of my work. I have spent the past 15 years speaking to hundreds of people from all walks of life, across all income levels, all about happiness. And this is what I have found to be true. Happiness is not a feeling. It's not a magic spell. It's not about wishing for it to happen. It's not about lotions or potions or hacks or tricks. It's about none of that. Happiness is about habits, and it's about practicing those habits. It's not some fleeting feeling that some of us are lucky to have and others just aren't. No. People love to say stuff like, oh, happiness is a choice. If you choose to be happy, then you'll be happy. Kinda, not really. The truth is, happiness is actually something much more tangible than that. It's something that you can study scientifically. So with a little bit of information, we can all get better at happiness. And that's the good news. We can all bring more happiness into our lives. So if I do my job here today, when you all go home, you can start living happier lives. And you could start sharing that with other people, and they can start living happier lives too. Okay. It is one thing to talk about the pursuit of happiness, but let's talk about how to do it. How do you actually build happiness? Well, You've got to do stuff, and you have to do it every day. This is not something that you're going to do once in a while. So let's start with what we know, okay? There have been hundreds, literally hundreds of studies conducted by economists and social scientists and psychologists and biologists all around this one question. Who is happy? Who are these people who wake up in the morning and just exude joy? I'm sure you know these people. Maybe you work with one of these people. Maybe you've seen them at a coffee shop or they sat next to you on an airplane. Let me be clear, I am not one of those people. So who are these happy people? Well, there was a great study out of the University of Minnesota a few years ago. Social scientists conducted a study of 75 identical twins. They were born between the years of 1930 and 1950. They were adopted by separate families, so they grew up in completely different environments. Now, at the age of 40, they were reunited and they were given personality tests. This is a researcher's gold mine. We've got 75 people with identical genetic material raised in an entirely different environment, right? We can really look at what is nature and what is nurture. And this is what they found. About 50% of our happiness is fixed. It's genetic. There's nothing we can do about it. But the other 50%, the other 50% is entirely within our control. So, we are in control of 50% of our happiness. Now, before I go on and start to tell you about the things you can do to build happiness, I realized I never really defined it, right? I said what happiness isn't. I said it's not a feeling. So, what is it? Happiness is three things. Happiness is about friendships and relationships. It's about engagement. And it's about work. If you can build happiness in those three areas of your life, you can have overall lasting happiness for your entire life. Now, I have to tell you this. We're all actually really bad at doing the right things to make ourselves happier. And I'm talking about long-term happiness. It's not for a lack of trying. I think we all really want to bring more joy and satisfaction into our lives. But there's a problem with the way that we think about happiness. Our intuition is just off here. It's almost as though our minds are playing tricks on us when it comes to happiness. Okay, let me give you an example. Let's talk money, right? So many of us assume that if you make more money, you'll be happier, right? Really, let me tell you what's going on with money. When you make more money, it doesn't make you happier. 
What money actually does is money makes you less unhappy. So if we spend our lives chasing more money, you're never going to have more happiness. So here, this brings us to lesson number one. Stop chasing the big things. And you know what I mean by the big things. I mean money. I mean a big house, uh, a new job, a new car, whatever it is. Research has shown that happiness that comes from those big things lasts six months at most and no more. No matter what we do, happiness from the big stuff, it just fades. If you really want to build lasting happiness, what you need to build are habits. You need habits. Those habits will almost act as a magnet for joy to bring happiness into your life. So what are the habits? Okay. Habit number one, and this is the most important one, friends. Friends are magic. We need to make more time for social connections, even when we're exhausted, even when it's the last thing that you want to do. Friends are actually the remedy for that exhaustion. Friends lower your stress hormone. Every available study says this, friends are the key to happiness. Now, I know, because you are probably like me, and at the end of a long day, all you want to do is come home, plop down on your couch, and watch TV, and not talk to anybody. But this is exactly where your mind is playing tricks on you. This is where you need friends. Friends are magic. That's habit number one. Okay. Habit number two, this one comes from my former professor at the University of Pennsylvania, Dr. Martin Seligman. This is a guaranteed happiness booster. This is what I want you to do. At the end of every day, I want you to write down three things that brought you joy and why. Three things that made you happy. Simple, easy, personal stuff. I mean, I'm talking easy. I had a great sandwich for lunch. That works. Uh, an annoying meeting got canceled. That works. All of this stuff goes into your joy journal. And the reason why I'm telling you to do this is actually twofold. The first one is this. We as human beings are besieged with this negativity bias, right? We focus on all the bad stuff and we spend no time looking at the good stuff. Here's a great example of this. There's a very famous basketball player. His name is Chris Paul. He makes loads of money. He's achieved at the pinnacle of his career. He's broken records, everything you can imagine. And in an interview, he said this, I obsess over my losses. My losses hurt way worse than the wins ever feel good. And that's that negativity bias. So by writing down three things in your journal, that's the first step to overcoming the negativity bias. The second thing this does is, by writing all of that stuff down again, you actually get to relive it. You get to re-enjoy it. You get to deepen the feeling, re-experience it. And then when you read it six months later, you get to experience it all over again. So that's habit number two. Keep a joy journal. Okay, habit number three. This one comes from Harvard. It's actually from Harvard Business School. They have a class at Harvard Business School called Happiness and Leadership. It's a hugely popular class. Everybody wants to take it. And here is a technique from this class. This one is actually from Dale Carnegie, whose books date back to the 1940s. So there's nothing particularly new or advanced about this, but it's incredibly effective. And here's the technique. I want you to live your life in day-tight compartments. Okay, what do I mean by that? I want you to stay aware of the future, but focus on the present. This idea of day-tight compartments is an analogy that comes from the world of ocean liners. So let me explain to you what it means. So on a big, huge ocean liner, if there's a leak in one section of the ship, what the captain does is he presses a button and these huge metal doors come down and that leak gets contained to that portion of the ship. It's a watertight compartment and the ship becomes virtually impossible to sink. You see the analogy here, right? So if in your brain you've got a leak, you've got a worry, you've got an anxiety, a what if, whatever it is, 
Stay aware of the future, but keep yourself grounded in the present. In your mind, bring down those metal doors, isolate the problem, and keep moving forward. So that's habit number three. Live your life in day-tight compartments. Okay, the next one I want to talk about is actually um, a different area. This one is about work. I talked about it when I gave you the definition of happiness. I think this is an interesting area to think about for happiness because I think it's counterintuitive. I don't think any of us really think of work as fun. But I am telling you this, work can be a huge source of satisfaction and contentment. Okay, so what do we know about work and happiness? In order for work to be a place where we can cultivate happiness, satisfaction, contentment, it needs to have two characteristics. This applies for everybody. I don't care what your job is. I don't care what you do or where you do it. Your work has to have these two characteristics. One, your success must be earned. And two, you have to feel that your work is helping somebody do something that they otherwise would not be able to do for themselves. So I think it's pretty clear, right? Your success needs to be earned. You need to deserve what you're doing. You need to be working for whatever it is that you're doing. And you need to do something that other people can't do for themselves. So once your work has those two characteristics, it can start to be a place for happiness at work. Now let's talk about some specific stuff that you can do at work. So here's the first one. I mentioned it earlier, and I said it's really important, and it's back again. Make friends at work. Friends are magic. The number one predictor of workplace happiness is friends. Now. There is nothing trivial about this concept. It's not childish in any way. We need people at work to be our champions. We need people to celebrate our successes. We need people to turn to when stuff goes wrong. Make friends at work. Lesson number one. Okay, lesson number two. This one is about thinking about yourself for a minute. Um, what I want you to do is think about what are your strengths? What are your unique talents? What is the stuff that you do really well? Your gifts, okay? We have an enormous power to harness happiness at work, but you need to think about this. What is the stuff that you do really well? You need to do that every single day at work. You need to use your talents. You need to use your strength if you do that you can start to have more happiness at work. That's homework number two. Number three is this. This one is all around a sense of progress and accomplishment, okay? This can take a bad day and make it a good day. This can take a good day and make it a great day. The number one driver of happiness at work on a day-to-day -day basis is a feeling that we are making progress towards something meaningful. Okay, let's take a second and think about that. We need to feel that we are making progress towards something meaningful. So here's the irony with that. It's really important to have goals. It's hugely important to work towards those goals. But here's the trick. You never actually need to accomplish those goals. You just need to feel that you are making progress towards something meaningful. So that's lesson Number three, tap into small wins so that you can feel that feeling of accomplishment. So that's my, that's my little lesson on happiness. I hope that you all learned something today, and I hope that you start bringing it into your life and sharing it with others. So in summary, friends are magic. Two, keep a joy journal. Three, three. Live your life in daytight compartments. And four, remember, work can be a huge source of happiness. So remember all that stuff. And I'm telling you here, go, do it.